What do you love about being Asian American? This question was posed on the internet and some of the answers may surprise you. Yeah, we got to talk about this viral Reddit thread. Andrew, this person goes on to list the food number one. Then they go on to say, I love that I can tap into more collectivist worldviews because the hyper individualism in the USA is just getting toxic. Don't get me wrong. Confucian collectivism can be just as toxic, but I feel like I can tap into a balance of both worlds as an Asian American. Ah, tapping into the balance of both worlds, guys. We're going to talk about it. We'll go through some other popular answers so please hit that like button right now if you like this kind of discussion but david you know what taps into the best of both worlds it's small ass sauce taps into the best of the italian calabrian chili world and also Sichuan mala oil guys check it out check out the content on the Instagram page too, to see all the people that are trying it, our foodie and chef friends alike. I think my first quick thought, and, and this sounds like kind of crazy to say, but my favorite thing about being Asian American is just having a low probability of having like a super duper messed up family. Like I'm not saying that it that doesn't happen and I'm not saying I haven't seen it, but I'm just saying amongst Asian American immigrants, typically, the, the parents are together, right? Okay. Statistically, well, I mean, statistically, statistically speaking, yes. I'm not speaking on every individual family. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I think that us growing up in the town that we grew up in, man, I saw some crazy stuff. I'm talking about people doing drugs with their parents. Right, right, not, right. And yes, was that more in the, you know, the trailer park zone or whatever? But I'm just saying like, that existed. Right, you're just saying for Asian families, generally, statistically speaking, there's a pretty high floor at least of like, yeah, I'm not saying that the, 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 the relationship between the parents and the children couldn't get toxic or, you know what I mean, depending on how the tiger parenting is applied mm -hmm. if you do have tiger parents. But I'm just saying that is my general thing where I'm like, hey, man, at least you don't got the crazy, crazy <laughs> downside. All right, no, that's fair. Hey, wait, this list is about what you think is good about being Asian American. What, what do you so, think? What do you think, man? Uh, one of the things I like about being Asian American is uh, being able to kind of share with all different types of Asians and everybody's somewhat united kind of under immigrant Asian kids. You're and saying I, in a way that they're not even united in Asia? Yeah, I think in Asia, when you're in Asia, it's actually harder to be around other types of Asians and share a bond. You're saying you're only friends with like people from your certain region or province of even whatever country you're Usually, from. Usually, it's like... I guess it's more similar to all going to like an international school, maybe in Asia, where you have other types of Asians with you at the school. Anyways, I could, I could see Asia being more classist as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I, I think it's cool. We're just all here kind of bonded by a certain experience and immigrant uh, status. And then we're all just kind of like cool with each other. Yeah. I do think the original poster was right, though. Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism versus Socrates, Plato, Christianity are pretty different. Although it is kind of hard to say, like, what does that mean? If somebody comes from like a Socratic West versus like uh, the Confucian East, mm. it's very difficult unless you like really study it. Like, what does that mean? Right. But it, yeah. of course there's differences. Yeah. I it's think a different most, hemisphere. I just feel like a lot, most people looking at the world today would be like, yeah, maybe, maybe America needs a little bit more Confucianism right now, but it'll swing back and forth. Right. Uh, and does Asia need more uh, Socratic Athenian theory? Possibly. Hey, man, it's all about a balance, and you know, there's pros and cons of everything. Anyway, let's get into the answers, Andrew. The number one most upped answer, and I, tell me if you're surprised by this or not, was food. People love Asian American food. They say, I refuse to live out of the LA or NYC zone because the breadth and the depth of the Asian food cannot be matched. And this turned into a big discussion. Other people are like, hey, don't forget about the Bay Area. What about Houston? What about Seattle? No. What do you think? Why, why is food overall like the 10 out of 10 oh, answer? Oh, man. I think food is the indisputable champion or aspect of Asian culture that everyone around the globe. Even like, like non-Asians, yeah, right? Yeah, non-Asians and no matter what religion background, you probably like some Asian food because it's just tasty. And obviously, it, it's uh, that's a large umbrella term. Asia encompasses a lot of different regions and ethnic tribes and kind of cuisines. So I would say, yeah, it's pretty awesome that in America... You can eat Filipino food, Chinese food, Korean food, different types of Chinese food, uh, Vietnamese food, all in one plaza. Well, you go get Burmese food, too. Yeah, then. and it could be good all in one plaza. Indonesian food, Burmese food. You can have even, like, Chino-Latino food right. all in one, like... And Would you agree you cannot even find that situation in Asia? You can't find it anywhere in the world. If you go to Asia, it's not going to be that diverse altogether. They might have more micro nuances of that region. Yeah, though. but I'm saying like, but you have to travel to that region. Anyways. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree. Um, what, do we, what do you think? Do you think Houston and Seattle are overlooked as foodie hubs? 
Yeah, I, I, think, I think, so. I, think I, I think you know what the reason is is because you don't have the density. The density in terms yeah, of like one. Yeah, you got to drive everywhere. But no, Houston and Seattle have great food. You know what I think one overlooked aspect is? I think uh, Asian Americans, and obviously this is not 100 out of 100 people, they also have a higher rate of being super foodies in the sense that they like the food, the best food from every culture around the globe, not just around Asia. Yeah, I think you can trust, to be honest, a Chinese person's tastes on like, most cuisines. You talk about Chinese Americans. Yeah, dude. I just know like, Chinese not, Americans. Not, not, not Chinese people necessarily. I just, I just know Chinese Americans eat everything, man. They are probably the number one foodies, man. I think like that eat other types of food. Yeah, you know what I mean, anyway. this person says. Um, depending on how much you deep dive into respective worldviews from your disparate backgrounds, it's easy to realize how mutually clueless people are about any society or culture that's not their own. The takeaway for me is a, at least to assume I just don't know ish about other people's issues that I'm not personally an expert in. So this basically is guy, this guy is saying that being Asian American made me realize that I don't know anything about anybody else. Whereas a lot of people in America, they don't know anything about anybody else, but they think they know about other people. Oh, so I guess, it, I guess it made him. It was somewhat cool. humbling to him to know that he doesn't know about other people. Yeah. Or you could be, you know, like I said, our situation's different. It's part of our career. You could do the deep dive, whether it's on YouTube or Quora and various Wikipedia sites to research everybody. Right. right but right. I noticed that a lot of people, even Asian Americans, don't do that, mm -hmm. to be honest. Uh, and, you know, they might not have the same incentives to our time availability. Somebody said food, obviously, but also family connections. Asians tend to believe that it takes a village to raise a family. Family ties and loyalty are strong in many Asian American families. We are raised to believe it's our duty, not something you do when you feel like it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think having that slight duty mixed in of like that immigrant struggle of like unity and like duty to your parents, I think is cool. Like the filial piety on a certain level. I appreciate some filial piety. I think it's good to an extent, obviously. I think certain Asian families are too extreme and depending on your situation. Yeah. But but yeah, I do like I value that. I value to, be, that. to be fair, Andrew, I did not notice anybody go, Tiger Parenting! Yay! That was the best experience! <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Like I said, it depends, man. It really depends on your point of reference. If you compare it to, like, having parents that are drug addicts, having a Tiger Parent is not that bad. If you compare it to, like, the rich Tom Brady or whatever Becky kid at school that had the great, you know, the super fun upbringing... Then you're like, it does not as fun. It really depends on who you're looking at, right? Let's be honest. Um, this guy was saying, um, Eastern martial arts are a lot of fun to study. Some are straightforwardly practical. And he goes on to list Sanda, Muay Thai, Judo, Karate, BJJ. And other ones are more like, you know, they look good, but they're not necessarily great for fighting. But I love Eastern martial arts. Okay, so he loves Eastern martial arts. That's fair. And I think Eastern martial arts has at least influenced a lot of martial arts across the world, if not like most of it, whether or not the traditional form is the most practical. Are you talking about, Andrew, if you fight with Shaolin Kung Fu where you imitate crane style, monkey style, snake style, that might not be the best thing to bust out in a fight fight. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, but I think that like, generally, especially when it comes to kicks and stuff, martial arts, that type of full body martial arts definitely is, is influenced from the East. This guy said, um, I love how Asian parents tell us to study hard. And a lot of Asian parents, they get a lot of blame for unreasonable academic expectations. However, it is the system that we live in that forces Asians to study harder <laughs> because, you know, we have to like get higher scores than everybody else to get into university. So this guy was like, why is it so bad that our parents stereotypically on a bulk distribution level, like I said, it depends on what family you were raised in. It's individual family to family. Why is it so bad that Asian parents stress academics so much? Mm. Uh, no, it's not generally that bad, to be honest. I mean, but I think it depends on your family, right? If, you, if your family comes from a business family and a lot of business kids, they just start working in the family business rather than go to school. That's actually a good amount of Asians too. Right, right. They're, they're, I think that they're, that's an overlooked style of yeah. Asian. And some of those business kids, they still want their kid to like go to get a Harvard MBA too, though. It's, it's very variable, guys. But yes, in general, Asian parents will nag you about your grades more than another type of parent statistically. I would bet that. Somebody said, we have culture. I grew up in a white town my whole life. What I've experienced and encountered is that a lot of white Americans hate that they lost aspects of their ancestral culture. That often leads to actual cultural appropriation to fill that void. Emphasis on actual, uh, basically saying that 
white people have to culturally appropriate because they lost their ancestral culture. Like, whether that's ties I, to Ireland, <laughs> Germany, England, or yeah, Poland, so just, or whatever. I, I see what they're trying to say. I mean, this is kind of a, a jab at white people. <laughs> because I think oftentimes people say, oh, white people have no culture. Well, I mean, if you're like... Anglo-Saxon, that's kind of a culture, though. Well, that's the culture that we all have to adapt to to live in America to some right, extent, right? Right, right, But a lot of people, a lot of white people are mixed white, so they don't, like, subscribe to just one culture. Because like, they're, like, 15% uh, six yeah, different Germanic, white things, right? or I'm going to do Irish St. Patrick's Day. That's my white uh, identification. You're yeah. saying that that's why they go so hard on, like, Cinco de Mayo or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I think that Asians, especially if you're only one generation removed, you probably know your roots and where you come from. So yeah. you know yourself. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. Somebody says being tan. I like being golden and crispy like a perfectly roasted marshmallow and not being sunburned ever. That's funny. Yeah. Yo, you know what's really interesting about this, Andrew? I learned that Asians, that because it's like hard to see because a lot of Asians are, they, so, I mean, there's a spectrum, right? But you could be lighter skin, but even then your color is still yellow, which is still some sort of like a color. But it just doesn't show up yeah, as strong, it's right? But it doesn't, you don't get burned as easily as like, obviously this is like, I'm not trying to single them out, but like an Irish person, right? Typical Irish, right. But uh, it's because Asians kind of have an undertone of yellow, slight undertone of yellow. A lot of Asians do. That's why some people call us the yellow people, but obviously, you know. But you it know. gets brought out more in the sun. So there's, this person was just saying Asians tan really well. They sure. like the golden marshmallow sure. color. Um, this guy said, I just feel like it's a great time to be Asian American. I'm Filipino, so I don't know anything about Confucian collectivism. I never grew up with tiger parents. My drive for education and success is my own. And this guy goes on to list a bunch of things about what he loves about being Filipino American. And then other people were saying, um, yeah, like, yeah. So a lot of people were saying like, you know, that's really interesting because he almost got all the upsides of being Asian American, but he didn't have to deal with any of the mental issues of having a tiger parent and sort of like that harsh parental upbringing. That's cool. Yeah. Shout out to him. I mean, dude, I always, always said this. Dude, maybe. I always stopped being from a well-adjusted Filipino American family dude. where you still end up like studying and going yeah, to school and getting money man. was lit, man. Cause dude. it was like, you didn't have to deal with any of the Confucianism, which is some of that is the bad part of being right, Asian. Right, right, but then you still get to relate to other Asian cultures still. Yeah, so, man, shout out. Yeah, yeah man, I'm jealous. Um, this guy said, you know, I'm an Asian American that was born in Asia and I emigrated to the U.S. Basically, I love that, for example, I was growing up in a lower middle income area and allowed me to ke collect, um, interact with a lot of different minorities. And it also allowed me to interact with a lot of other immigrant kids. And we would all eat each other's foods because we didn't really have any food sort of hangups because we're all immigrant kids. We all eat everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as much as growing up, there was uh, some slight tension between Asian Americans and Asian fobs, but not really like even in a real like violent way all the time. There might have been some like side talking and jokes and stuff like that. But overall, I would say like even with the immigrant kids and the Asian American kids, I feel like there was fair some fair, like some decent unity. Yeah, I think it varies. Like, it varies yeah, person it varied to person. person like for individuals, but I would say overall on a macro, there wasn't like a lot of visceral beef. Right, right. There was right. spats here and there, of course. You know, I get it. Oh, yeah. You're too fobby. You're too yeah, American. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But overall. Even, even between cousins, right? But yeah, business. it wouldn't be get to that level. Yeah. Um, this guy was saying, I'm not, this is a very macro statement, Andrew. This is one that you got to wrap your head around this one. This was saying, I really appreciate the idea that I define Asian America through the life that I live and not the reverse. This person was saying, because Asian America is still so new, it's almost like I can contribute a lot to the narrative, whereas like other people's narratives, it's already spoke for because there's so many influential people in there. Yes, I guess. Yeah, yeah I see what they're saying. This person was saying, I hate to be elitist, but Asian Americans and their families tend to have, statistically, a high level of academic success, career success, low divorce rate, and general positive contributions to society because they're not like, um, they're not degenerates or anything like that. Yes, uh, not statistically not that common, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. This is, of course, it's going to vary group per group. It's going to vary, like, even within Chinese, Andrew, we all know that there is a variety, you know what I mean? Like, I've met a lot of chi different types of Chinese people over the years, man. No, there is there is street yeah, Chinese. Yeah, a, for sure. a lot of people they wouldn't believe that depending There's Chinese on drug addicts living. out there that are on the street man I've seen it yep um, somebody was saying that um, American Asian American culture is almost non-existent at the mainstream level but that's what causes me to form a certain kinship with other Americans so they're almost bonded Andrew 
by the lack of penetra- penetration that Asian American culture has in the mainstream. That's cool. I know. I, I, I do believe that sometimes you are united by a common struggle or a common enemy, perhaps, but like a common struggle. Yeah. Yeah, this person says that my friends from other cultures got gifts like video game consoles and nice cars from their parents, but then they had to take out student loans for their education, whereas I feel like that financial approach would never fly in an Asian household. Yeah, I think that, you know, you don't fully appreciate it until you get older, all those frugal times that your parents said, hey, you know, like... We're not giving you all the gifts that Billy or Tyler across the street is getting. Right, having the coolest car in high school is not important. Or even having a car, right? right? Um, And uh, yeah, you appreciate it when you get older, for sure. But I think at that time, you're just like, man, mom, why don't you buy me the cool stuff? Yeah, I mean, you you want to be, when you're a kid, you want to be cool. Um, Somebody said, as compared to whites, not looking as corny when interacting with black culture. That's, that was crazy. (laughs) I'll say this. I think this. I think when you're from the Eastern Hemisphere, even like from my black friends that perceive it, it's different than another Western person who already has their Western culture pre-built also wanting their Western culture. Right, because let's let's say Asians come to America as a blank slate as far as what... They're Asian, but also it's blank as far as what Western culture do they pick up on. Right. So you kind of come here and you absorb... You appreciate, you might appropriate, right? You can, you, you could, everybody's a little different, but you absorb it on different levels. And some Asians absorb more like, I guess, typical white culture. And then some people absorb more typical black culture. Right, right, right. But I guess there, this guy was saying it's not as cheesy because yeah. you don't have, you don't already have a pre-built Western yeah, yeah, society yeah, yeah, that yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. born into. Somebody's saying, Love might not be the right word, but I think I really like that Asians are generally viewed as being competent and knowledgeable in science, technology, and whatnot, even if it's model minority stereotyping. This perception has helped me in my career at times. Yeah, and again, man, that stereotype of us being smart, it's not a negative stereotype, although it can play negative to you, obviously, in certain settings, but... Because there's some connotation that comes with it, but... No, that you're um, not good at other things, right? Yeah, or that you're weak, or you're not cool, or you're small, but you're smart, you know, right, so... Right, right. Whatever. This person was just saying, man, and Andrew, just life expectancy. Because I guess, what, Asian Americans, they probably live, like, I don't know, I want to say, like, maybe five to ten years longer than other people. Oh, jeez, I don't know the statistics, but yeah, I'm I, not I, I've seen the stats before. Um, someone was just saying Asians are very hardcore when it comes to surviving the ability to endure hardship yeah. and delay gratification, bro. I think Asians ability to eat bitterness in their life, go through struggles and continue working is admirable. It's admirable. And I think it, it, it does make the second generation still kind of tough. And that's why, uh, yeah, you know, I feel like that having some of that, immigrant mission right, right. Or even, mindset. even though you're second gen yeah the slight immigrant grit i'm not saying i got the grit like our parents but we you know we have some grit passed down and hopefully i'd like to still pass down some of that to my kid depending on my situation you know when i grow up right 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 um andrew overall what are your takeaways this list went on and on and on i think that uh first of all the food is a dope one for sure but i think it's a little bit more like it, i think these lists it kind of just like reminds you to to enjoy everything because you, you can't really control what tribe you're born into and your tribe has like these pros and cons and the pros and the cons they even vary depending on the context of the environment or the fishbowl that you're operating in and uh yeah i think this was like a very interesting list and obviously reddit let's be honest it's kind of a nerdy site there's a lot of thoughtful people yeah yeah man i again i'm gonna restate mine I think being able to hang out with all different types of people in America, but also all different types of Asians and just kind of feel together and still respect each other and have that kind of equal, uh, kind of like feeling like we're united in some way and not having to carry over all of that motherland hierarchy, which I'm not saying that there's 0% in Asian America, but it's just a lot lessened because we all kind of come here. We're like, Hey, listen, we all came here in America. Let's all try to treat each other with respect and be equal. What do you, what do you want to say? And this is like uh, a thoughtful thing to end on Andrew. What do you want to say to people? Cause I, there was comments that were more negative saying, man, there are way more cons than pros. Even though there are some pros, this guy said Chinese culture and parenting decimated my self-worth. I've been struggling with it since childhood. And now I'm getting close to 50. What do you want to say to these people? People who like feel like their 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 Asian experience was downside for them, even though obviously the majority were like, you know what, man, there was pros and cons, but like ultimately my parents loved me, and you know they gave they gave me the basis to go, you know, 
go do whatever I did with life. But then there were some people who were saying it broke them. Yeah, I mean, I it's tough because, you know, not being particularly in that situation, but I guess I would say to people that are maybe 45 years old, 50 years old, and feel that way, it's like, damn. And it was probably more likely from that generation because yeah, yeah, the parents yeah, were true. super old yeah, school. Yeah, true. Uh, I feel like that it's never too late to benefit from the positives. I don't think it's ever too late. And, like, I know that it may be tough, but there are positive things about being Asian now. There's a lot of positive content, a lot of positive positivity about being Asian, and you might as well lean in that before you get too old, before you go, you know? Like, why not? Like, it's here. Yeah, yeah, It is yeah. here. It is right in front of you. Yes, you may not be trained to absorb it, or maybe you feel like you're over it. Or right, Asian you're like that traumatized has, dog in a yeah. cage, and the cage yeah, is I gone, get but it. the dog's I, still traumatized. Dude, what, do, what would you tell any traumatized person? Like, you, you have to try to go through therapy, work it out physically, because the mind goes, but the bot, you know, or, or the body goes and the mind follows type thing, where it's like, you know, just try to enjoy it as much as possible, partake in it. Uh, because it's only getting better and better. But yeah, and move, and move to the six two six, especially for this Chinese guy, man. Move to the six two six and enjoy some of the cheap, delicious ten out of ten food for the price. Yeah, per or value. just go to Asia, man. I mean, whatever. I don't think either one. I think both plans have a, a pro and con. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Let us know what you love about being an Asian American, and uh, let us know what you think about the responses. Uh, keep it civil until next time. I'm gonna hop out, boys. Be out. Peace. Peace.